Hello and welcome. Take a moment and write this table out, give this problem a shot, and then when you're ready, press play and we'll try it together. All right, so the first thing I want to do uh, is recognize that we've got some kind of table and a pattern that they want us to analyze. They say they want to know which function is shown in the table below, and they give you a bunch of function equations down here. We can do a couple of things, so we'll, we'll take this in three different ways. One way we can do this is to take these x values and plug two or three of them into each equation until we get the appropriate output. So in one of these equations, when you plug in zero, you get one. You plug in negative one, you should get one third, and if you plug in negative two, you get one ninth. And you could just try it for each of them. And here, uh, it will work in choice four as the answer. Let me show that. So if x is zero, we have three to the zero. That's what it says, x is the exponent up here. So three to the zero, that's one by definition. Three to the negative one, that means one divided by three, and that is one third. And three to the negative two means one divided by three squared, which is one ninth. And you can keep trying it, right? Three to the first, that equals three, until you're convinced that this is correct. So the problem with that strategy, of course, is you're just plugging in, and that might take you a while, and of course it doesn't work if choices aren't given. So what are two other strategies we can use? Well, um, this is an exponential function. How do I know that? Well, linear functions have slopes, so we would add a constant amount each time. And I don't see that here, right? For example, 1 plus 2 is 3, but then I don't add 2 again, I add 6, right? And then I add 18, right? So we're adding different amounts here, and it's not a constant amount that we're adding. Quadratic, where we have squared, has a constant second difference, plus 4, and then, see here it's plus 12. So we don't have a second constant difference, a constant second difference here. And it's not quadratic. Quadratic would mean x squared, right? So the next thing you might try, which is pretty typical after linear fails and quadratic fails, uh, is to look for a constant number to multiply by. And you can see 1 times 3 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9, and 9 times 3 is 27. When you have a constant amount that you're multiplying by, and it applies here too, a ninth times 3 is a third, and a third times 3 is 1, that means it's exponential. And here you can see that we're multiplying by 3 each time, so it tells us our base is going to be 3. And the amount of times you multiply by 3 is determined by the variable x. That's the second way of thinking about it. A third way of thinking about it is to use some technology. So to use the graphing calculator, press stat, and you can enter edit, and now you go to your list, you enter in negative 2. Remember the negative signs down here. Right? Enter, negative 1. Enter 0, enter 1, enter 2, enter 3, enter. And then we go to our y's. We have 1 ninth, so that's just 1 divided by 9. And then we have 1 third, 1 divided by 3. Then, of course, we have 1, 3, 9, and 27. And now you can have the calculator generate um, the equation. What I would do is first make sure my stat plots are on. They're all off right now. So I'm going to go to the first plot and just turn it on. There's the on selection right here. And then I'm going to go to my graph. So now, oops, it's mad at me. Let's see what's, what's wrong. Um, if I go to the second stat plot, oh, I can see my first plot, if you go into it, you can see it has list 1 and list 4. But I didn't use those lists. I used list 1 and list 2. I'm just going to clear this off and hit second 2. Oops. Okay, so now it's going to know what to do. I hit graph, and a stat plot, all it does is will plot the data that I enter into my list under the stat button. So if you have stuff you're entering into your list, use the stat plot to see it. So I hit graph, and you might get a bunch of stuff. You might see everything like this. So I'm going to go to y equals and clear off some old equations. I have an old equation there. Scroll down, clear and enter. And then I go back to my graph. I can kind of see the points, but not really. So I'm going to hit zoom. And then if I scroll down, there's a lot of different options. Um, and zoom 9 is zoom stat. That's a zoom that will focus on the, the stats I just entered. You can see the shape of these points right here. And if you know that an exponential curve is somewhat like this, you can go to stat, calc, and under here, there's lots of different fits. If you knew it was a line and you wanted the equation, use choice 4. 
5 is for quadratic, if you knew it was something squared but couldn't find the equation. 6 is for cubic, when x is cubed. Quartic, of course, is for fourth degree. And then we scroll down, eventually you'll see um, choice 0, exponential regression. That means a technique that will find the line best represented by these points. I hit enter. And enter again for list 1 and list 2. And there's my equation. A is 1, 1 times 3. I know B is 3 because it says it right here, to the x power. In other words, 1 times 3 to the x is just 3 to the x. That's our equation. Um, since R is 1, that's our correlation coefficient, that gives us the exact fit. And we have the exact equation for this line. Um, so that's another way of doing it. And again, if you just go to stat and calc, if you're not sure which one it is, if it's a line or something quadratic, keep playing around and look for R values that are 1 in order to figure this out. Because once you have R equals 1, then you have everything you need because r equals 1 is a perfect fit and that's the perfect equation for this data. Alright, thank you.